almost ready there. There we are, that's full screen. So that's all ready to go, Pat. Thank you and over to you, thank you. Great, thank you. All right, so welcome everyone to the Axios Systems presentation. So an IFS owned company. Um, my name is Pat Moran and I'm a senior business solutions consultant and with Axios now for just over three years. And before we dive in, I'd like to announce that on the 10th of June, IFS officially completed the acquisition of Axios Systems. And to give you some background on IFS, so IFS uh, develop and delivers enterprise software for companies around the world who manufacture and distribute uh, goods, build and maintain assets, and manage service-focused operations. So customers include the likes of Sky, Aston Martin, Carlsberg, and IFS is a leader in the Gartner Magic Quadrant for FMS, EAM, and ERP solution. And IFS's mission is to bring amazing moments of service to the life for our customers. And with Axio Systems world-class ITSM and ITOM solutions, we can now ensure customers have a great experience from the beginning to end of their consumer journey. And this is where a true synergy occurs between IFS and Axio Systems. And today we're at the start of this exciting journey and one we want all of our customers, partners, and employees both existing and new to be part of. So let's move over to demo time. And I'll go into my demo environment here. And I'd like to take you on an enterprise service management journey. So a really big push nowadays on omni-channel. So one place for users to go to request services. It's not all about IT. You know, there's so much more that you can leverage within Assist for HR, facilities, finance, and that's really a true enterprise service management capability, which is in high demand. And first, I'd like to provide you with an overview of our self-service portal. This is what we call AssistNet. And you see here that I'm logged in as Brenda Bennett, and Brenda is an HR manager. And you'll notice here that we've got a lot of good details on our homepage. So you'll see we've got our shortcuts. Uh, this is one easy one-click access to the things that Brenda uses the most, maybe some FAQs. Uh, reporting a printer issue. We also have service disruption, so inform your user base on planned and current outages. Uh, we've got some HR news, you'll see over here on the right hand side, um, especially with this, uh, you know, the pandemic over the last year and a half or so, uh, the bulk of our users are working remotely and what a great way to provide them with some really important information related to HR. You know, here's just some examples. We've got a COVID-19 corporate statement there as well. Also, my approvals. So Brenda, being a manager, you know, here's easy access to any outstanding approvals right on her homepage. We do have our Google-like search functionality. It's what people know. So easy adoption to search for services, FAQs, and more. Uh, you can also configure your homepage. So if you have different roles or departments within your organization, configure that uh, self-service portal so it's much easier for them to look at and get access to the information that they need. Let's expand our menu over on the left-hand side just to go through some of the other things. So just keep in mind, this is a demo environment. We've got everything turned down. You can lock this down and uh, make it simple for your users and only let them see what they wanna see. But you can see here, we've got some application links. So links to applications or documents that you can access daily. And an important one, um, FAQs, you know, publish simple how-to knowledge articles that will provide a quick, easy step-by-step -step on resolution for your end users. We've got our top FAQs, maybe Outlook, uh, HR 101 getting started. As you can see here, we've got a few on new employee orientation. And having these FAQs readily accessible for your users can help deflect those inbound calls to your HR department, which in turn frees them up to focus on other important issues. Custom services, so you can have categories specific to different lines of the organization. You know, IT, HR, finance, facilities. Assist is the ideal solution for enterprise service management, and we're going to dig in that, uh, dig a little deeper into this shortly. Um, items, so a list of items that are allocated to Brenda. You know, these could be services or assets. Give them access to what they have currently collaborated with them. Okay. Um, also some discussion. So here is a collaboration between your user base. So let them collaborate. And just for example, if I go into Brenda's discussions, you'll see that she was created once for some help on an Excel formula. So here she's brought this out, asking a question. As you can see, we've got some replies 
and also a reply on how to fix this formula for. Her. And you'll notice here that this is nominated for knowledge. So provide them that collaboration with their user base. Very helpful. Uh, track progress. So here is easy access to Brenda's approvals for open issues and requests. If I select that, you'll see that this is going to provide a list of Brenda's questions, or sorry, Brenda's open uh, tickets and easy access, you know, deflect those calls going into the service desk for updates, allow your users to go in, provide an update, or even escalate a ticket right from the portal. We've got surveys, you know, have your users access surveys right from the self-service portal to capture that important information. I'll just select one here just to show you. Very easy, radio buttons, save that, and that can be reviewed. You can even have an easy link right to the ticket that this survey is based upon, all from the self-service portal. And then finally, on the menu side of things, we've got our reports. So Brenda, have an access to important uh, report data. If I just open one up, I'll just show you what some of our reporting capabilities look like, where you can unsubscribe. You can also export these reports to different areas, such as PDF and Excel. Go back to my home page here. We also have um, live chat and chatbot capabilities, define resolution services, and much more. So let's take a look at our chatbot in action. And let's just say that I've been hired and I need to set up my Android phone. I'll just type that in there and let the chatbot gather that information. As it's working away, it's coming back saying that I can help you with that. And here's a KB article that should answer your question. I'll select that there. And this brings me to this FAQ. And you'll notice here that uh, we do have a, a video associated to this one. Um, you can embed those videos, uh, also images, uh, make it simple, you know, very simple how to's. We also have ratings and feedback. We want that important information so that our knowledge or FAQs aren't stale and kept up to date. Also, we've got these two buttons up top. So this answered my question. What's great about this is that when that is selected, it'll automatically open and close a ticket on your behalf, stating that you use this knowledge article. So very good information and capturing those stats uh, that'll keep your knowledge up to date. Now on the other side of that, if it didn't help your issue, you can select that button. It'll automatically open up a ticket and send that off to the service desk or a support team to follow up with you and get that uh, issue resolved for you. Okay. So let's move on to our ESM journey. So a lot of companies are struggling these days when it comes to you know onboarding and offboarding of new employees. So there's multiple tickets to manage equipment, uh, there's software installations, account access, and so on. And I wanna show you how you can really benefit by associating workflows to your service request offerings, especially when it comes to HR activities. So I'm in my services area, and I just wanna show you the structure that we have. So you'll see here HR, this is one tile with the, uh, the amount of service offerings within this catalog. And we're gonna go in, you'll see that we've got HR services, you know, benefits, employee relations, um, employment services, maybe some health and safety, as well as performance management, or maybe just to ask a simple question. So what I'd like to do now is go in and open up an onboarding request. Now I can also do a quick search up in our search bar here, but I just wanted to show you the structure that we have set up within this service. And this is under employment services, uh, resource management, and then here are the different things. So I'm gonna select onboarding request. And you'll notice here right up front, um, we do have a workflow behind this request. So within the progress bar, it shows the uh, different stages associated to onboarding a new employee. So let's start to fill out this form. So justification for new resource, let's put new HR manager. Scroll down, look for the start date. Let's start them on July 5th at 9 a.m. First and last name, I will use myself. And the role type. So here we have some dynamic fields. So this way, um, it could be used to create to, the, to drive that intelligence based on these role types. So if I were to go in and select manager, you're gonna see that we have some more options. 
In this instance, I have the ability to go in and select the tablet type if, re uh, tablet type if required, as well as phone preference. Uh, executive park parking, I won't need that, but uh, it, it is there within my little uh, scenario here. Also request a laptop bag, or maybe I want to select an iPhone 12. And once again, that dynamic field where it's creating. Do you have a number to transfer? You know, my preferred color, as well as maybe the preferred network provider. So just some examples there within this um, service request for onboarding. Uh, we also do have the ability to add attachments. So if there's any forms associated to that, you can simply add that uh, document directly to the service request. So I'm going to submit the request now. And we'll let that do its magic. And now you'll see that we now have a new service request, which is S2347. And it is sitting at manager approval. You'll see that the different stages that are associated to that as we move along. And I'm going to get into the process designer in just a little bit to show you uh, the workflow behind this. So now I know that this is sitting at manager approval. And as Brenda Bennett, she is a manager. So I'm going to go to my back to my home page, and I'm going to bring up that approval. So what's great about the portal is that you have access to approve, you know, these service requests. So it, al it also could be for changes. Anything that needs approvals can easily be done right from the portal. Now, Assist will kick off a notification, letting Brenda know that she does have a decision task to make. And another great option here is we also have mobile access. So this can also be done on a mobile device. So I'm going to go in and approve this request. So once again, you'll see that there's a tab that will provide Brenda with the details of the request and what she's approving. And I can simply go in, you'll see the question, do you approve this request? I'll just go in and approve that and select save. Now when I go back to the service request, you can see now that this has moved on to signature verification. Now, each of these tasks within these stages are going to send out notifications to the proper departments or individuals that require to go in to fulfill that task specifically. Okay. So just to do a, you know, that's just one example on leveraging assist to help you manage enterprise service management with other departments such as HR and submitting an onboarding request. And we'll take a look at this process a little further, like I said, when we venture into our support portal and how we can easily manage this type of request. But you could take this, you know, one step further. You know, Assist can also integrate with your HR systems platform where it can trigger the service request and start the process for you. So just a quick little recap on our self-service portal. You know, it really provides your users with a great customer experience. It allows them to try and resolve issues uh, using FAQs and knowledge, uh, provides users the ability to report an issue, request services through an easy to use service catalog, access to live chat and that chat bot, which you saw in action. Also track the, pro uh, track the progress of their open tickets, ability to approve requests quickly via the portal and mobile device. Uh, message Center, when we're at, on the home page here, provides a lot of information for your customers. Uh, keep them informed and up to date. And also configure your departments, uh, you know, such as HR, finance, and facilities for that true enterprise service management visual. And in the end, it's really about empowering your end users and providing them with an easy to use solution. And that's what's so great about the Assist self-service portal. So let's move over to the support side of things because I'd like to show you the process designer and also what the, our support side looks like. So here's a great view of our support portal. So I like to access data that is important to me. So this is a configured view for um, the HR team. So you'll see over here that we have the ability to go in and I've also configured some others. So change and release management, problem, incident, report, and assets. So easy access with a simple click. You know, it's uh, what are the things I access the most? So no need to drill down into a menu structure when I can easily add them to the appropriated section within um, the support portal. So very similar to the shortcuts we had on the self-service portal. So here is our HR homepage. So these are called monitors, what you see in here. And it pre presents you with a quick snapshot view of events, you know, identified by a selected query. And these are your work queues that can be saved and accessed right from your homepage. So in this instance here, I've got all open HR cases and requests. 
all open HR tasks, and also a little dashboard report um, where we can have some reporting capabilities. And let me just minimize this or move this area here. And over on the right-hand side, you'll see we've got our summary, so one-click access to maybe my team's open events, uh, my work queue. Uh, you have the ability to provide some tutorials, so how-tos on HR benefits, maybe case management and timesheet for your support staff. And over here, we've got our layout settings, so we want to give you the ability to configure your homepage. You know, the different settings here, we've got eight. If you want to see minimal uh, details and data, you can easily do that in layout one, or if you want to check out more, you've got these options. Uh, we also have our search bar, which is a, you know, where we can search tickets and also do some assist, uh, assist searching uh, based on any free text as well. So that's just a quick overview of the support side of things from an HR standpoint. What I'd like to do now is go into our process designer and show you the workflow behind what we had uh, for that onboarding request. And as you can see here, in this instance, uh, we've gone through the different areas of the stages. We're in the initial setup. And over on the right-hand side, you can see that we do have some details on the stage. And you'll notice here that it's HR onboarding. And when I select that, you'll see that we have some associated tasks. So for example, in the initial setup stage of this onboarding request, we've got security controls. You know, please create base level IT account for this new hire and this is assigned to the service desk. We've got some notes set up, which is assigned to HR. Also assess software and network con uh, connectivity set up. So each of these tasks are associated to fulfilling that onboard request. So you've got one service request that's gonna capture all that information and these tasks can be done in sequential, uh, as, uh, areas as well so once one task gets completed it can move on to the next and so on okay so that's just a quick at uh, look at our process designer so you can access the uh, workflows right from the service request record and having that ability to have these uh, workflows easily available and it gives you a great visual on where you are within that uh, uh, workflow all right so let's go back to our PowerPoint presentation and finish this up with a couple of things. And here we've got uh, coming is a new release of Assist and this will be coming in late November and it's called ACE. So self-service native, native apps as well as HTML5 apps. Uh, we've got some chatbots and virtual service agents as well as an advanced self-service portal. Uh, Microsoft Teams app, and also gearing it more to omni-channel. And some uh, uh, examples of the ACE Edition feature pack, um, MS Teams integration, so a very big one coming. Um, I, a lot of organizations are using Teams on a daily basis to in, in, you know, use within their service department, so a really good uh, integration there. Um, assist virtual agents, as well as our ACE mobile app, so accessing um, assist right from mobile devices and also the ACE self-service portal and a new assist mobile HTML client as well. All right, so that uh, concludes my demonstration on Axios Assist. So I'd like to now open it up to any questions that you may have. Thank you, Pat. That's great. Yes, um, we've got time for a, a couple of questions, just uh, maybe one probably. Uh, but let, let's let's see what we got. We've got a question there about the chatbot functionality um, and cost. In fact, a couple really about licensing and the additional cost uh, or if it's part of the solution. Um, so, yeah, it, is, is that an additional cost or is it, you know, maybe what comes with the, the out of the box solution maybe? Yeah, so you do get the chatbot uh, out of the box so that it is available. There is some work and setup to be done um, that allows you to access it. So a Q&A maker where you're setting up your questions and answers. But what's great now is this with this new ACE edition that's coming out in late November is there's going to be some more functionality and that is going to be part of that ACE edition. Excellent, thank you. And uh, I think we can squeeze this one in. Actually, it, from a, we've talked about ESM all day. It's been an awful lot. That's been probably one of the two of the team themes um, 
the low code, no code and, and ESM. Y your ESM solution again, is that included? Is that is that part of the software? Is it just about configuring it rather than sort of buying additional stuff? Yeah, so it is it's it is included, you know, and that is just uh, configuring what you have. So you get access to that with Axios Assist. And you know, as you said, you know, ESM can, you know, you can easily leverage that within Assist, you know. We talked about not just about IT. You could do so much more when it comes to the other parts of uh, enterprise service management like finance, facilities and HR. Yeah. Good stuff. Brilliant. Okay, well, thank you. For that Pat, thanks very much indeed and and we're well you, you'll be back very shortly actually to join us in the uh, next q a panel which is great so thank you for that for the minute and we'll speak to you a little bit later thank you thanks david thanks good and now it's time for another break another chance to grab a a coffee and a tea maybe even a biscuit this time if um if you're lucky so please join us again at three o'clock and uh 